Welcome back to Electronic Structure and Bonding in Inorganic Chemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Alright, in this video we are going to discuss something referred to as the macrocyclic effect. Now, if you don't know anything about the chelate effect or you haven't watched the video on the chelate effect, I recommend you go back in this playlist and watch that. What the chelate effect is, is whenever you have a multidentate ligand, it could be bidentate, tridentate, tetradentate, whatever. When you have a multidentate ligand and all of the donor atoms of that multidentate ligand are binding to the same metal ion, there's a drastic increase in stability. In fact, why don't I just go back and basically show you? All right, let me go back. Um, hold on, let me do this. Open recent. Uh, I think it's this one. All right, so I go back to this. Notice how I have this metal ion right here. I haven't indicated its charge, but just assume it's a metal ion, M. And I have ethylene diamine, a pretty typical ligand that has two donor atoms, nitrogens, chelating or binding the metal. Okay, chelating is used as a verb, it just means that there's a multidentate ligand interacting with the metal through multiple atoms. Even just these two atoms right here is a drastic increase in stability over two separate monodentate ligands. All right? This one down here, EDTA, ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid, has four donor atoms that could potentially bind to the same uh, metal ion. That's even a, a greater increase in stability than you see in ethylene diamine in this situation here. All right? But something very strange happens. Um, something will, strange will happen ultimately whenever I have a structure like this. Now, I mentioned EDTA is, is uh, tetradentate. It has four binding sites for a metal. This does too. All right? There's one binding site here, this nitrogen, two, this one, three this one, and four this one, all right? There's four binding sites. Now, what is the macrocyclic effect? The macrocyclic effect is essentially the same thing as the chelate effect, except for the fact that the, the, the multidentate ligand, and they're usually tetradentate, the donor atoms are all in a very rigid or semi-rigid structure, all right? They're part of usually a very large rigid structure. Now, if you haven't taken biochemistry, uh, this molecule right here is re what's referred to as protoporphyrin, protoporphyrin 9, okay? I use this example because biological systems are notorious for utilizing the macrocyclic effect. They're going to make these very large rigid structures, usually aromatic, and in fact every ring structure in this molecule is aromatic. So as a result of being aromatic and completely conjugated throughout the ring, all the pi electrons are conjugated, it's extremely rigid and planar. It doesn't really fluctuate or move a lot. And so these nitrogen atoms are fixed in a relatively uh, limited position. They don't, they don't move around. It's very rigid, okay? So that means within here, within this region, there's a very defined amount of space in that area, and it turns out that there's only specific ions, very few. In fact, in this case, there's only one that can fit in there, all right? So not only, do, see, with the chelate effect, you can have different ligands that bind to a lot of different metals. But the macrocyclic effect, because generally these structures are very rigid, number one, the interactions with the metal are a lot, a lot more stable than they are in just the simple chelate effect. But usually because these rings are rigid, they're usually specific for only one or two metals. All right, And in this case, the metal is iron. Okay, And it can be iron 2 plus or 3 plus, although generally it binds in the 2 plus state. Okay. Iron fits in here exactly. And the reason the macrocyclic effect is so powerful is two reasons. Number one, it's just, it's just an application of the chelate effect. It is the chelate effect. Multidentate ligand, a rigid structure, and the effect because it's so rigid, that also makes it more stable on top of the fact there's four donor atoms. 
But one of the things that's important is because this, this particular ion, iron, is so specific for this space in here, that high level of specificity even adds to the stability even more. It doesn't take hardly any energy to get this iron in there. In fact, the iron wants to be in there. In fact, you get a release of energy. It doesn't take energy to put it in. You actually get a release when iron goes into here. All right. So with the macrocyclic effect, you have multiple things at play. You have, again, you have multiple, multiple donor atoms. That's number one. That's just the chelate effect, right? You have multiple donor atoms. You have a rigid ring structure thus the name cyclic, macrocyclic, a rigid ring structure that has the donor atoms. And then generally you have limited, you have limited specificity. Limited specificity, I'm really messing up that writing, but limited specificity for the metal ion. In the case of protoporphyrin 9, which is in biological systems, this is in your body right now, it's iron. And in fact, when you put this iron in here, it becomes a very special molecule referred to as heme. This molecule is heme, specifically it's heme B. Okay, it's found in a lot of enzymes as a coenzyme. Very important, in fact, it's in your mitochondria, in your electron transport chain. It's, in, it's attached to red blood cells. Okay, so it has a lot of very important functions. It picks up oxygen and so forth, and it's used with various enzymes. But the reason it uses this iron is because this space in here is just perfect for the iron. It's too small for some of the bigger ions and it's too big for some of the smaller ions. Okay. Now one other thing I just want to mention, and this is sort of kind of sort of the genius of the design of, uh, of these macrocyclic rings. If you have free iron sitting on a table, fine. Nobody cares, it's just iron sitting on a table. You put this iron, free iron, in a cell can cause a lot of damage. Iron is prone to giving up electrons and oxidizing things. It could oxidize your DNA. That's a problem. One of the reasons you have these macrocyclic structures like protoporphyrin 9, porphyrin rings and things like that, is because by trapping the iron in this ring, chelating it in other words through the macrocyclic effect, it prevents it from doing all sorts of oxidative damage. Okay, there are some other examples of this too. What I recommend you look at, and it's actually really interesting to read about, is look specifically at vitamin B12. You may also look this up as cobalamin. Vitamin B12 is arguably, and I, I'm pretty sure about this, it's the largest, the largest small molecule in all of biochemistry. B12 is massive. It's bigger than this, and it also has um, in a cobalt. A cobalt ion, usually in the plus one state. And again, it's the macrocyclic effect. And another great example for you plant people is chlorophyll. Chlorophyll of all kinds has a magnesium in the center.